We be on the verge of a radical change in the way cannabis is used for medical purposes. A group of drugs experts have recommended to the Home Secretary that doctors should have greater freedom to prescribe medicines derived from cannabis. The Advisory Council on the Misuse of Drugs has recommended that cannabis medicines should be rescheduled because there is evidence of some benefit for certain conditions. The review was prompted by Parent Power, a small group of mothers who fought for the right to bring cannabis oil into the UK to help control their children's epilepsy seizures, some of whom have now got special licences to receive cannabis medicines. Well, we heard earlier about five-year-old Ethan Mason. He has a rare terminal genetic disorder which can cause him to have up to 200 seizures a day. His mum, Tracy Rossiter, currently uses a legal form of cannabis oil and says it's helped reduce his symptoms. Now, she's asking the Home Office to grant Ethan a licence so that he can be given cannabis oil with a higher dosage of the compound THC, which is currently illegal over 0.2% here in the UK. At the moment where we are, Ethan, um, because he's having a lot, a lot of seizures, um, I don't actually know how much of his walking ability is gone because I feel um, if the seizure control was better I'd, I'd be able to see what's left of his walking. His talking, yeah, that has also started to slowly disappear <coughs> and um, the professor at Grace Ormond Street told us by Christmas this year that they would be very <coughs> surprised if Ethan was, is still walking and talking. So it's um, really hard to. Oh, on the yellow, the yellow train. Does he even loves the trains? <laughs> you better have a look at your toys. Shall I move this out the way? There we go. He can have to two hundred seizures a day. Um, but that varies, you know, it can vary from just having a couple a day. The worst ones that he's had has been the, the, the tonic clonic or the old name grand mal seizure, but he doesn't have oh. them anymore. It, the last one oh. he had was December last year. It's shaking. Uh, some people will describe it as a fit. He'll, his, his eye contact, he can, he can, his uh, eyes will go fixed to one side. Uh, and um, that can last from a minute to a good few minutes long. I wanted to use that one. And we've we, we seen, within weeks, we've seen benefits of using this. I'm so glad. I tried it with Ethan, um, just with the two drops, after 15, 20 minutes, I could see his body relaxing. He's still having seizures. OK, it's, it's the myoclonic seizures, but he's still having seizures. Um, and here we, are, here we are today, and we just want help. We want help, and we need it now. And we, we feel that, you know, the, the medical cannabis is the way to go for us. We've seen the benefits, and we'd like some help now, please. Well, Tracy is joining us now along with Clark French from United Patients Alliance, an organisation which uh, promotes the medical benefits of cannabis. And also with us is Baroness Meacher, who sits in the House of Lords as a crossbencher, which means she isn't aligned to any political party and leads a group on drug reform. Thank you all for joining us. Tracy, it's absolutely heartbreaking to see that film with you at home with Ethan. Tell me how frustrating it is as a parent to know that there could be something out there that could help your son and you're unable to give it to him. Hi Chloe. Yes, it's, it, it's, really, it's really frustrating. You feel that, um, you know, you, 
you feel that there's another option there that could be used and our country uh, are not allowed to use it but they are in other countries so we feel why why can't our country do this for us what is the advice that you have been given about being able to pursue this to get the cannabis oil that you want for Ethan? Unfortunately, our country can't advise. Um, the companies you ring as well can't advise on dosaging. So you take your own initiative to start on the amount of drops you want to use on your child. Um, that's what I did. A very safe way of dosaging, obviously, a couple of drops. Um, and after a few weeks, it, you never seen the benefits. And were you advised to, to take him abroad for this? No, what, what I actually did was, um, because of, we, we saw the grand mal seizures go, the tonic clonic seizures go, and I wanted to have advice on dosages at that point. And because our country couldn't offer that, I spoke to a doctor in Holland, and obviously because it's in Holland, he advised on a product to use, uh, and that's the product we're using today. Clark, for people watching this, they may be frustrated, in fact a lot of the comments that we're getting in from viewers are frustration that this hasn't been legalised. This has been a long struggle, hasn't it? it? It has been a long struggle. I've been doing this now since I've been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2010. Um, I found that cannabis really worked better than the pharmaceutical drugs. I save the NHS £30,000 every year. And my story is the same as so many other people in this country who have found that cannabis works, found that cannabis helps them, and have taken steps to make sure that they are well. And ultimately, why are we spending police time and resources to criminalise people that are just looking to be well? Sick children are suffering needlessly now because the government is not changing this law fast enough. The police need to instantly decriminalise so that no patient is fearful of being arrested because when you're sick and when you're ill and when you've got issues the last thing you need to be worrying about is the police and the law it's insane that this is the situation that we're in in 30 states in the US in many countries in Europe in Israel in Canada changes are happening and we are being left behind the Home Office needs to reschedule immediately and Dosing needs to be available. The police need to be able to uh, show discretion and leave patients that grow their own currently alone because patients are forced to do this. You don't, I don't think people really understand what it's like to, to be like to have your life taken from you. I can't even imagine what it must be like to have a sick, child, a sick child in the same position. When you find something that works, you don't care what the law says. You want it, you, and you want it now. The law is wrong, the science is there to prove that cannabis is medicine, the Prime Minister's husband owns the majority of profit shares in a company that uh, sells cannabis across the world, but yet it's denied to UK citizens. I'm denied Sativex, even though I have MS, even though I've had all of the other symptoms, all of the problems that would allow for it. Okay. It's, an actu it's an actually, a f it's a farce. Clark, I want to bring in Baroness Meacher, who's here with me in the studio. We are a step closer to this being made available for people for medicinal purposes, aren't oh. we? Oh, yes. I mean, yesterday was a huge day, a huge day for about a million people in this country, possibly more, we don't know the numbers, who are suffering a whole range of illnesses, and MS is one of them. There are 10,000 people who told the MS Society, we need cannabis to be legalised, 10,000, we would use it, we want it. Um, there are pro actually could be a million people suffering from severe neuropathic and other chronic pain. Um, there is evidence, evidence is clear that, it, that uh, cannabis is helpful for these people. But yesterday, finally, the uh, Advisory Council on the Misuse of Drugs, as, as we know, recognised that cannabis is you know, cannabis products are medicines and should be recognised as such. So what is the next step and what sort of time frames are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, I mean, the next step is the Medicines Regulatory Authority has to define uh, which products um, uh, will be recognised and reduced from Schedule 1 to Schedule 2. Some of them definitely will. Uh, the question is how many? Because, of course, if the Medicines Regulatory Authority, the MHRA, are very, very restrictive, then not that many people are going to benefit. But the great uh, news for me was in that ACMD 
uh, document to the Home, Home Secretary, they quoted evidence about um, a cannabis of medicine value for people suffering from neuropathic pain. Now, those are large numbers of people. Surely, uh, the MHRA, again, to, to acknowledge and recognize a cannabis medicine for neuropathic pain. At least that would be something, and epilepsy, without any doubt. My worry for the epileptic children is that there is this new drug called Epidiolex coming on the market, just one cannabinoid. It will help some children. But these children who fought for this change would not be helped by Epidiolex. We know that. There are much, much better cannabis products with a little bit of THC. Yes, THC, you don't normally hand it to a child. You wouldn't. But these children are so sick um, that it is important for them to have the drug that will really control and eliminate. It can eliminate their, their seizures. It's incredible. So how close are we to parents like Tracy being able to go to the GP and saying, I need this drugs with THC in for my very sick child and the GP writing that prescription? Well, I would say uh, we're a big step closer, but there are lots of uh, steps along the way, I would suggest. There is the MHRA, but then the question is, will this be funded by the NHS uh, for that? Really, we need NICE, the, the Institute of Clinical Excellence, to to recognize uh, these can cannabis medicines. And we know that because this terrible mistake was made 50 years ago to put cannabis into Schedule 1, research has been inhibited. That the universities have not been doing this research. Finally, Oxford University, the Oxford Cannabinoid Technology is funded by Neil Mahapatra, a wonderful man, 10 million pounds, uh, to, look at, to look into these um, pain, uh, cancer, you know, uh, Crohn's disease, and so on. Um, they hope to produce some evidence within 18 months for these diseases. So even if we, so it could be 18 months anyway. Uh, and then you have to get the agreement, you know, of all these organisations. So it takes time. It takes time, but it's a huge step forward, huge. And for you, Tracy, what's the next step for you to, to try and secure this medicine for Ethan? Um, well, that would have to be that I'd have to go over to Holland to do that. I must stress, I need to stress as well, that the cannabis oil that I see in the benefit, at the benefits that I was for Ethan was full spectrum, full plant extract. Um, the one I'm using at the moment is CBD with CBG, full plant extract. And for me, that's the way to go because I need to know out of all the 5,000 strains of cannabis, I need to know which are the top ones that would help with epilepsy and the seizures. So we need to look at that as well. And I know that your MP has also written to the Home Secretary to push this forward. Listen, thank you all so much for coming to speak to us this morning. I'm very grateful to you.